Hi. You may have noticed that I'm not Maria, and that's because I stole her desk today because I want to tell you a story about the Fast A format. Now, before you click away, I know you're thinking, what is there to say about Fast A? It's so simple. Look at it. And you're right. It is simple. But what's interesting is how it became simple because it did not start out that way. And I want to dig into that today. So in the late 80s, a group of scientists built a bunch of sequence alignment tools where the input to those tools are files in the FASTA format we know today. And one of these tools was called FASTA. I honestly hadn't heard of the FASTA tool before, but it's actually still maintained to this day. And although the software is not as popular as it once was, the format it created is now ubiquitous. So how did they design this format? Well, I asked the co-creator of Fast A, Bill Pearson, and it's honestly more interesting than I was expecting. He says that while developing these tools, he was using a protein database from the PIR, the Protein Information Resource. So initially, the input to his tools had to be in the PIR format. So this looks pretty similar to fast A with a greater than sign, but there's a lot more going on. There's an extra line for the sequence description. There's this weird asterisk at the end of each sequence. And the P1 actually means something. It means complete protein sequence. Whereas if you wanted a fragment of protein, you would use F1. If you wanted to store DNA, you had to use DL or DC and so on. So when biologists started using their tools, what Pearson and his team noticed is that they would often forget the description line. And so if you remove the description line, the first line of the protein sequence would be treated as the description, and so it would be ignored in the alignment, which I can imagine is really annoying as a user. But because this caused so much confusion, they just removed the need for that description line, remove the asterisk, forget about P1 and F1. And so we end up with a much simpler FASTA format that we know today. But not only that, the first versions of these tools could only support querying one sequence. And so you didn't even need the greater than sign. If you just gave it ACGTs, it would just work. And so if there was any friction to using the tool, they wanted it gone. Or as Pearson told me, quote, I did not think that wet lab biologists needed to learn about sequence formats, which makes perfect sense, especially in the context of other formats at the time, like the convoluted GenBank format or, God forbid, the Enbel format. And it's also just interesting how user feedback can so drastically affect the file format that millions of scientists are using 40 years later. Without the FASTA tool, we would probably still be using the PIR format to store sequences. And I love this story because it gets at the bigger picture, which is that when you're creating software for scientists, you want it to be powerful. You also need to make it intuitive. You have to remove all the needless barriers to using your tool. When I was researching this, I, I came across a shocking sentence on Wikipedia suggesting that you can use a semicolon to denote comments in a fast day file. What? I've never heard of this before. I've been using FASTA files for the last 10 years. I've never seen one with a semicolon. But before you go off and add comments to all your FASTA files, uh, keep in mind this is very rarely done. And more importantly, it's not something all parsers support. So I tried this with BioPython and CTK, and they will ignore the commented lines. But CKit gives an error and tells you, this file is just not valid. What's with all the semicolons? Um, which is why I was even more surprised to find a paper from this year, 2024, a few months ago, 
suggesting that we start using comments in FASTA files to store metadata about the sequences. Um, please don't do that. Uh, that would break so many things. <laughs> but you know, at this point in my research, I had answered pretty much all my questions except one. Everyone, myself included, and the authors of FASTA, always write FASTA in all caps. Does it stand for anything? Are you supposed to shout it when you use it? Why is it all caps? Well, according to a reputable source, namely FASTA underscore guy 88 on Reddit, who claims to be Bill Pearson, it is not an acronym, it's just FAST. Because at the time, what used to take 24 hours, they brought it down to five minutes, which is incredible. And the A at the end of fast A refers to all, as in fast alignment of all sequences, both DNA and protein. Remember those tools I mentioned at the beginning? I, I didn't want to get too deep in the weeds, but before fast A, there was fast P for protein alignment and fast N for nucleic acid alignment. And fast A was the generalization of these tools. Oh, and one last thing, in case you're wondering. Fast A is pronounced fast A and not FASTA, according to Bill Pearson in this paper. Well, that's all I had to share. Uh, I better go before Maria notices I'm using her desk. Bye.